Okay, this is Kevin Lockett for Akron 08. Today we have Donovan Rogers at the Akron, Akron Urban League. And Donovan, Donovan's involved the uh, job development program. Uh, Donovan, have you had a chance to sit down with the next president? Uh, because you're involved with the GED program, mm -hmm. what type of ideas or strategies or policies uh, would you like to talk to the president as far as things they can do to encourage kids and, and young adults, okay. even older individuals, okay. um, to obtain an education, um, maybe think about college, but okay. or even job training. Okay. Um, well, let me start by saying this. Um, here at the Akron Urban League, you know, we, we operate a, a year-round GED program for students ages 16 to 21. And one of the things that never ceases to amaze me um, happens every, every Monday. We actually interview um, students for the GED program on Mondays. And, it, and, and each Monday, we'll have at least 15 to 20 students who are um, seeking to re-enroll in some in, in, in some form of school. Um, they've dropped out of school for various reasons. Some are 20 years old, some 21 years old, some 18, 17, 16, but it never ceases to amaze me the number of young people who are who are out there in our society who don't have the 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 the, the bare minimum form of education. They don't have high school education. So um, you know, if I had the opportunity to sit down with, with uh, the next president, one of the things that I'd like to focus on, um, and, and let me also um, add that the majority of the students that we see are minority students. Um, and they're dropping out of school for reasons that I don't think we really deal with. I think we place a lot of blame on the actual student, but not enough emphasis on the curriculum that um, the student has become disenfranchised with. I think that if we could place more focus on culturally relevant curriculums within the school, um, I don't think that there is you know, one particular model that will work across the board. I think that you have to focus on the type of student that you have and teach the um, curriculum based on that particular student. Um, and what I see in a lot of instances, you know, you see very intelligent young people. You see bright students who just don't find the curriculum stimulating. And we have to realize that, you know, children learn differently. There, you know, there are there are minority students, you know, who may not learn the same way as their counterparts. But if you teach just based on how their counterparts are going to learn, of course, the minority students are going to suffer. Um, and you know, I just, I, I just feel like, you know, when we see these, these, these numbers of young people who don't graduate high school, there are specific reasons why they become disenfranchised. Now, if we want to talk about post-secondary ed, okay, that's, that's, that's fine. But if the high school environment is not conducive to learning, then, you know, the young people still won't make it to post-secondary ed, even if you have funds available for them. You still have to make the learning experience interesting. And I'm not saying that you that you that that your entire day is spent teaching African American history. No, I'm not saying that. However, um, it does need to be an integral part or a component of that child's day or a part of that child's year, not just during the month of February. Because what you're doing is you're building self-esteem. These young people need to realize that they can achieve the same as their counterparts. They can do the very same things. But if they don't see um, examples of achievement within their own race, then where do they get the uh, ideas from? So, okay. you know, that's what I would talk about. Okay. Uh, if there are students out there or young adults out there who are interested sure. in obtaining their GED, sure. Um, they can give us a call, 330-434-3101. They can set up an interview. We interview every Monday um, from 2.30 in 15-minute uh, intervals from 2.30 to 4 o'clock. Um, and we're always welcoming new students. And for people who um, have no idea what's involved with a GED, okay. um, just f briefly tell us how important it is to at least have your GED. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I tell my students all the time, it's a first step. It's not, it's not the final piece to the puzzle, but it's an excellent first step. There are very few things that an individual can do in today's society without at least a high school education or the equivalent. Now, one of the misconceptions that, that, that I have to deal with a lot of times and, and we have to overcome is that, you know, um, you can't pursue your education 
passed 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 the GED. In, in other words, most colleges won't accept you with a GED, and that's and 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 that simply isn't true. We have mm -hmm. students who who transition from our program to Stark State College, Kent State University of Akron. I have one student attending Central State University right now. So, um, you can take your GED and pursue your education past there. It all depends on what you want to do, but. You know the the GED or the, or the high school diploma is the basic necessity in order to get your foot in the door. It's just the first step, though. Are there many scholarships and grants available for GED students? Sure. Yeah. sure, GED students qualify for the same financial aid um, as a regular high school graduate would. Okay. Same thing. We do the same uh, FAFSA form. Um, they get the same scholarships, and actually, the Urban League offers scholarships each year. And um, a lot of our GED students qualify for those scholarships as well. So, but but the financial aid process works exactly the same for a GED student as it does for a traditional high school graduate. And briefly, briefly, let's talk about job development. Okay. Uh, what happens for a person who gets the GED? What happens from uh, for transition from job from GED to job? Um, well, what we try to do is um, here at the Urban League is, is match the student's interests um, with a particular job. Um, and we really encourage, our, our, our program has two components, the GED portion and the job development portion. So once a student completes our program and earns a GED, our goal is that they have either, became, either become employed or enrolled in some form of post-secondary education. Now, um, you know, and I always stress that, you know, it's, 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 um, it's easy to go out and find a job at McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, Taco Bell, you know, that's the easy thing to do. Um, and you know, in, in, in certain cases, um, our young people do find those types of jobs. But you know, we like to focus on the career as opposed to the job. So um, of course, you know, we offer incentives. Once a student gets a job here and keeps it for 30 days, we give them a gift card to the mall. Once they keep their job for 60 days, 90 days, and 180 days, they get the same incentive. But we also really, really try to place emphasis on post-secondary education. And learning the difference between a job and a career so that 15 years from now this student is still not stuck in the same minimum wage job that they received once they graduated from the Urban League GED program because at that point we haven't done them a service, we've done them a disservice. Right. Yeah. And once again, if people want to get some information, they can contact 330-434-3101 or akronurbanleague.org. All right. Thanks a lot, Doc. Thank you.